again. There's been another outbreak in the laboratory. The quarantine platform. We sent a team to investigate and recover the survivors, but they haven't returned. There's nothing on the radio either. We got a backup team ready to go. Just give the order and I'll, I'll go alone. Boss, what are you... There's no need for that. We can't afford to lose anyone else. We have no idea what's going on exactly. in there. Exactly. Anyone still alive's at their breaking point. Last thing we need is another unit storming in. No telling how they'd react. Fine. First off, check how much the infection has spread. Rescue comes next, after we know the situation. When you're ready to move, just use the iDroid. situation again. We've got another parasite outbreak in the laboratory on the quarantine platform. What is this? No idea. Transmission from inside. Here's the audio. Uh, it all makes uh, sense now. Uh, I... Uh, I win. Where's it coming from? Unknown. It cut off before we could get a fix. It all makes sense. 
Think he means the parasite? No way to know. But right now, that's all we've got. Hopefully he can tell us something. We'll have to close the tent behind you, boss. Don't think the infection's airborne, but... Find the source of that transmission, boss. Find our man. You never know. Something sweet. I can smell it even through the mask. The rescue team reported that too. Said it smelled like ripe fruit. We cannot allow the infection to spread. If anyone shows symptoms, you must put them out of their misery. That includes me. What the hell happened? Oh. At least you're okay.
What's going on? I win. I'm no snail. Damn it. So he sent the transmission. Seems like he had a way of IDing who's symptomatic. But what was he trying to say? Snail. Yes, of course. It all makes sense now. Do not let anyone showing symptoms get outside. As infection progresses, it triggers an overwhelming urge to get out in the open. That's the parasite controlling them. Once outside, the birds will feed on infected bodies, spreading the parasite on land.
We're all grateful, boss. It's your fault! They're dead because of you! What? He's right. I killed him with my own hands. They were on your side! I'm on your side! And you turned them all to ashes! They wanted you to shoot. It was that or be burned alive. Come on. Let's get this over with. Wait. I won't scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. I will always be with you. Plant your roots in me. Bearing them at sea. What then? We'll make diamonds from their ashes. Take them into battle with us. A shining light to our brothers in arms, even in death. incident at the quarantine facility. Assuming the vocal cord parasite evolved, I'm sorry, underwent a mutation. The only plausible explanations are exposure to some high concentration mutagen or radiation. 
As you know, some of the staff at the quarantine facility were infected with the parasites. The Wolbachia prevented them from copulating, but the parasites themselves can't be removed from their host's vocal cords. Once you're infected with... Skullface's parting gift, you're stuck with it. The researchers regularly used X-ray equipment to monitor the parasites in their throats. No problem there, they kept a close eye on the radiation doses. But that equipment didn't just give off X-rays. It was also emitting beta rays. Even though that's unnecessary for the scans. See, beta rays have far worse effects on DNA than X-rays. Meaning the only logical conclusion is that someone added in a beta ray emitter to trigger a mutation. Those beta rays leaked out from inside the equipment. Because the emitter was retrofitted, the shielding was inadequate. And the person who ordered and inspected the equipment was you, Doctor. That makes you the only person with the opportunity to install that emitter. So now you're saying I sabotage medical equipment for some wild plan to make the vocal cord parasite kill everyone? Or maybe you thought it'd reveal a way to treat the parasite without using the Wolbachia. With that much to barter, I suppose some people would welcome even a pathetic cur like you. Just stop it! You'd have no shortage of buyers, but most would be happy with just the parasite. You wouldn't need to offer anything else. However, if that buyer already knew about the parasite, they'd also know that by itself, it's no longer the ultimate bargaining chip it once was. To sell to that buyer, you need to throw in a bonus. A way to one-up it. There's only one buyer who'd be after that. <laughs> Emmerich, we record all communications on Mother Base. That includes radio transmissions to and from homemade devices. You've been in frequent contact with people in America. A private biotech company. A client of which is DARPA. And they are connected to Cypher. You made a deal with Cypher. You offered them a new parasite in exchange for your safety. This is the only place in the world where the vocal cord parasite still exists. And you used it as a testing ground. Tried to resurrect their bioweapon. But your plan to obtain the parasite has failed. Your bullshit ends now. And don't think you're leaving here alive. Twelve hours. After exposure to the blood of a symptomatic colleague, I found myself making my way up the stairs to this room. And I am not alone. Everyone who's infected, we've all come up here wanting to get outside. I know full well I mustn't leave, given the possibility I'm infected. Yet... Yeah. I can't contain this urge I feel inside me, like the alcoholic who tries to make any excuse for one more drink. Every step I took up those stairs filled me with this sense of bliss. I still have all my wits about me. It took no time at all to rewire the electronic lock and open the emergency exit. Then, just as I was about to set foot outside, I finally realized what was going on. This desire for freedom is not my own, but that of the vocal cord parasites inside me. They want the ravens to feed on us, pecking us to death. Attracted by these sweet secretions, they have mutated to facilitate this. The sweet smell is powerful enough to attract even a species with such a weak nose. So, before the parasites take complete control, I must... Most of the staff in here are already infected. At least, everyone I've looked at is. Infection with this parasite 
causes a high fever in the pharynx. I have modified a pair of night vision goggles to react only to this temperature range. With these goggles, you can identify who is infected. Other infected will, like me, feel compelled to make it outside. If the ravens get their meal, they'll head for land next. That cannot be allowed to happen. The whole idea of the vocal cord parasites was that they'd only copulate once exposed to a specific language over time. But the parasites infecting our men in the laboratory laid their eggs straight away. The larvae were eating their lung tissue almost immediately. What kind of mutation was it? Those who were infected and cured still carried the vocal cord parasites in their throats. They were still there, but the males had been rendered female by the Bulbachia, and copulation could not occur. So we thought, but it is the Bulbachia that mutated. Not the parasites? You remember I told you the Volbachia attempts to maximize its number of female infected hosts? Yes, hence the male-to-female transformation. Precisely. But other Volbachia strains use different methods. Cytoplasmic incompatibility, killing the males, and parthenogenesis. Caution. Rain parthenogenesis. Aphids. Aphids use that to reproduce via females only. Very good. The females lay their eggs without a male present, creating clones of themselves in explosive numbers. Parthenogenesis was originally a means for an organism to take maximum advantage of abundant resources by increasing its numbers. Certain strains of Obakia forced this to occur, to create more and more infected females. And that's why our men develop symptoms in the blink of an eye. Wolbachia, causing parthenogenesis, is common in parasitic wasps. Of course, the Wolbachia I introduced to men did not have this characteristic. But I believe the mutation, whatever it was, caused it to force parthenogenesis in its host, the vocal cord parasites. The Volbachia we used to prevent egg lane became the agent of limitless reproduction. There's something else. The symptomatic infected in the laboratory all wanted to get outside, even knowing there was napalm waiting for them out there. You said the parasites made them act that way, but parasites controlling humans. Is it possible? Parasites altering the host's behavior is a common occurrence in the world of nature. Long ago, the vocal cord parasites had this ability, but even I never foresaw they might control humans until I heard the things your man said. You mean the researcher on the top floor? The bit about, I'm not a snail? Yes. Among parasitic worms, there is a genus called Leucochloridium that uses snails as intermediary hosts. As you know, snails prefer dark, gloomy environments. But once parasitized by leucochloridium, they desire to be in the light. And that is not all. The parasitic worms thrust themselves into the snail's antennae, making them swell to abnormal size. The snail, meanwhile, frantically wiggles his antennae as the parasites squirm inside. The swollen, wriggling antennae soon resemble caterpillars. I don't get it. It is so they can be eaten by birds. Leucochloridium needs a bird as its definitive host to breed. They require their snail host to be snapped up by a predator so they make the humble snail appear to be a delicious caterpillar and lead it to somewhere in open sight. So you mean the staff trying to get outside? Was so the birds could pick at them. 
The parasites altered their mental state, making them crave higher places and to be outdoors. I can only surmise that both the Volbachia and the parasites mutated before the ancestors of the vocal cord parasites infected humans. Their hosts were birds. What we saw in the laboratory was some throwback to that time. The parasites attempting to make birds their intermediary hosts. It sounds insane. A prey mantis that is host to a parasitic hair worm will dive into water and drown itself. Just so the hair worm can lay its eggs in water. Rats infected with Toxoplasma gondii lose their instinctive caution and run right up to cats. Just some of the many ways parasites control the host. But we're humans. Surely our minds are too complex for that. I thought just the same. Free will is what makes us human, so it never occurred to me that the parasites could be controlling the symptomatic. But the mood, the will of a person can be easily affected by the balance of their cerebral substances. Take the toxoplasma I mentioned. It does infect humans, and it is thought the infected develop a more reckless attitude. Hmm. But to think that mutations occurred in both the Walbachia and its parasite hosts. Your observation is most apt. Both mutations occurring at once indicates the presence of a powerful mutagen. I see. Keep working on narrowing down what it was. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Just what do you plan to do? Present the charges against you and render an appropriate punishment. You're gonna put me on trial? <laughs> Call it what you like. What's the meaning of this? Out of here. All of you. Back to your posts. No, hang on. Yui has killed their comrades and interfered with their lives. They've had all they can take. Kill that son of a bitch! Kill her! Kill her! Stop! This is insane! You have no evidence whatsoever! You say you're an army free from government. You talk big about being a nation unto yourselves. But, but from the outside, you're just thugs, rebels, a militia, you terrorists, an unhinged threat to society. You're nothing but a, a bunch of psychopaths. You're... So you're not with us? N no, I, I didn't... I thought we were on the same side. That's too bad. I, I didn't mean... <laughs> Men, you will have justice. But our organization, the boss's organization, is built on order and reason. There will be no lynch mob. So stand down for today. We will gather all the evidence of this man's crimes. And then he will be tried. Dismissed. What do you think you're doing? Go ahead and execute me. It'll be murder in the eyes of the world. You've lost your minds. Don't you get it? You're seeing phantoms. Just look at that dog. No. You named him D-Dog, but it's obvious anyone could see that's a wolf. Because you're all a bunch of wild dogs. You wanted to believe he was too. To feel some connection. To fight your loneliness. You wanted something to cling to, to prove you deserve to be alive. You wanted to forget the death, your sins, so you'd cling on to dogs, or, or wolves, or even Big Boss. The boss is the same, isn't he? Every one of you is alone. That's why you suspect your own. I know, because I do the same. I'm one of you, too. Alone. Open your eyes! What you're doing is murder! Plain and simple. All you ever create is war! War and violence can never lead to peace!
Nine years ago, this man acted as accomplice to the attack on Motherbase. He then provided support to Skullface. Conspiring with Eli, he repaired Sahelanthropus in secret. His research materials caused the leak at the quarantine facility, which in turn caused the Walbachia mutation, letting the parasites off their chains. We lost a lot of good men. He also stands accused of murdering one of his own family, hiding the body. I haven't killed anyone. The rest is all wrong, too. The inspection was supposed to help everyone. I sacrificed myself for my companions just as much as any of you. Why won't you believe me? The prosecution calls a witness. <laughs> Love's gravestone, haunted by her phantom. It's just a machine. Machine. You forced your own son into the cockpit of a Metal Gear, a test subject. How? His mother had to hide him away, and for that you locked her in that coffin. No! She, she did it herself! It was suicide! And even if I did, what right do you have? There's more. We have you to tell us everything you've done, everything you've thought, all this time. Nine years ago, you agreed to the inspection in return for Cypher's guarantee that you'd be spared. I thought it was real! We've reviewed into everything else that's happened since you arrived here. Please. Guilty! All counts. Exist outside the law. What should we do, boss? Just give the order. We'll handle the rest. Prepare a life raft. Big enough for one. Food and water, too. Us. He's leaving. You... He's responsible for... For all of this! Think of all the men! He didn't lose a damn thing! This is the enemy! And he's here on his knees! Us. You are right. He is not one of us. But we are not responsible to judge an enemy. He leaves Mother Base, and that'll be the end of it. you do 
this? Am I the only sane one here? I... My... It's not my fault! Look, you can't discard your phantoms forever, Doctor. Son of a bitch will make it, you know. I can see it now. In no time, he'll be telling tales about the black-hearted Diamond Dogs. The shining white knight, blabbering on about our injustice, hiding behind his fool's idea of morality. And all the other fools will stand around, nodding with every word he says. No. One day he'll see through the lies he's built up, realize what kind of man he really is. What goes around comes around. You can't run from yourself forever. to get out sooner. Perhaps I'd have made it. Why didn't I stop the hatch from closing? Even if it meant losing an arm. But you can hear me, can't you, Joy? I know you can. You're recording all of this. Deep down, in some memory vault he'll never find. Duplicating it. Burying it under heat. Some meaningless code. <laughs> anyway, I guess I can say what needs to be said. I can still do that much. Talk to you. Even if I can't face you. Even if there's a heaven. Even if you're waiting there. I don't deserve to see you again. I don't deserve to love you. I signed up for Zero's plan. Even now that he's halfway to dead, his plan lives on, leeching away at the wall. And it took your strength to make it happen. In using you, I put the world in his palm. Once and for all. Clouds approaching. Zero. 
Zero, or whoever it is who's taken its name, they found me after the Caribbean. They made me simulate his will so that even after the body was gone, that will would keep the world turning the way they wanted. I had no choice. They dredged Largo Corsi Bulka, pulled up your phantom, forced me to revive and modify you. I thought I could bring you back, but in the end, I sold your will to him. Now this part is just one big shell. A husk. <laughs> Your phantom's no longer here. As for me, everything I touch turns to ashes. I could never make anyone happy. And now I'll never see my son again. But at least Hal's free from his father's hands. Me with child. Can you imagine? I wonder how you took the news. Were you jealous? I knew what I was doing. If I could pass your will onto a child I carried, my genes. Your beam, a father would be irrelevant. If I did that, that child would be ours. theories. Of course, I couldn't see through the dream. The false you I created. I only wanted to pass your will on to the next generation. But Zero took it away. And now I haven't just lost you. I've lost my Can you forgive the mother who couldn't protect you? The one who let them take it all away from us. Oh. Oh. There's still hope. You, the one he took away. He'll never break your will. The will to make this world the way you saw it could be. I buried code just to be sure. Inside of you, there is an egg. And when someone finds it, when they crack it, There'll be nothing left to stop you. The world you envisioned will become a reality. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I think 